haberdasher turned president, Harry Truman, was famous for saying, The buck stops here. Or at least, it's famously attributed to him. And that saying, or boast, is taken to mean, I am responsible, which makes it quite the magnanimous statement, rather godlike, I think, that Harry is, ultimately, to blame for everything. Seems doubtful to me. I always took the phrase in another way, that, in a system where everyone is on the take, politics, that the man in the big chair is the first taker. Like a prime lending institution, he is the creditor to whom the first bill is paid. The buck stops at Harry's desk because it's not going any further, not until Harry's pockets are sufficiently lined, which is only when Harry says it's so. Then the buck can be passed on to others. No president ever left office short of bucks. Harry had no intention of going back to hats. Okay, that's probably not what Harry meant, if he said anything like that at all. Bucks meant blame, and Harry would shoulder it, come what may. Today the buck isn't stopping. The buck went that away. The buck is nowhere to be found. Bart Simpson has a famous quote, too. He said, I didn't do it, and for Bart it was a catch-all. Bart would say it when he'd done something bad, when he'd done something good, and when he hadn't done anything at all. Denial. Denial has always been with us, but I'm going to say that it really came into style when the government cooked up the phrase, plausible deniability. That was one you had to stop and think about. It seemed like that one was straight out of the pages of 1984. And it sure as hell wasn't the buck stops here. Plausible deniability opened up vistas never before thought possible. It's quite fantastic how long people, myself included, will deny wrongdoing, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. Pete Rose was steadfast for 20 years, and he had steadfast supporters, until finally even the great Rose wore down. He got old and tired, and no one was really buying his lie. It wasn't getting him anywhere, so he took another tack. He wrote another book, or caused one to be written, in which he admitted that he'd done it. So there, are you happy now? Lance Armstrong denied it for years, and he only caved when his denial was buried by contradictory evidence that could not be denied, rather like Monica's sperm spattered on the blue dress, which I hope is in the Smithsonian, and should be on display for citizen review, like the United States Constitution, a reminder of what our leaders are doing. Alex Rodriguez is now the face of denial, but it's not working. It's like a magician is trying to get a trick across, but everyone has seen it before and knows how it's done. We've seen so much denial that we're sick of it. Still, everyone denies it for as long as they can. Teddy Kennedy denied it until I think he believed it or forgot exactly what it was that he had or had not done that night with the girl on the bridge. He'd been drinking. It was terrible. That's all. The two people I can think who made no effort to deny anything, making them true rarities, are the man who killed 13 people at Fort Hood and the Oklahoma City bomber. While these men might not have been proud of their atrocities, they could forgive or justify their behavior because they were reacting against a twisted system. The U.S. government had forced their hand. So even they, while accepting the buck, banked it elsewhere. When someone says they regret their actions, we read that to mean that their only regret is that they got caught. Previously, there was some attempt to disguise the guilt, and thus was born the saying that the cover-up is always a greater sin than the crime. So why bother with a cover-up? And why screw with the Fifth Amendment? These days, a simple I didn't do it seems to suffice. Taking us all the way back to George Washington and his cherry tree, mythical though it may be, not me, he'd say today, not me, and who would dare speak against him?